Good morning, this is Calamity Calling, and today we are on part three, four, of the suicide of Rachel Foster. So it was getting a little bit more witchy towards the end of the last one, and unfortunately I started playing this one, but then my camera decided to play up, which meant the footage corrupted. So what you have missed from the start of this one, which is day eight, is that we sleepwalked, we woke up in the church, which is falling apart, and then we were, we remembered a rhyme, a nursery rhyme, sorry, to tell us where creations are from Christmas, because for some reason we hid them in the church, our mum hid them in the church, sorry, and now we want to find them, and that's where we're at. Right, so we're going to have to play with the keyboard, because, um, basically, all my technology has decided to play with me today, so, yeah, this is how we do now. Uh, so just a warning, everything's going to be more jerky. We know this. Butterfly? Oh! Oh! Found it. Was so not expecting to find that. Was expecting to get very lost. Oh shit. Oh shit. That was just snow. Just snow. What the hell? Like, what in the actual hell oh, was this? Found the mystery decorations? No, no. No decorations. Is everything okay? I found something. What? I... It's like someone built some kind of bedroom. What the shit? Irving, you there? Uh, uh, of course, yeah. Uh, what bedroom? T tell me what you see. Okay. It's a little girl's I... bedroom. Why the hell is this? Uh, there's some windows. Drawn on the walls. Books. Sheet music. A pink bed. It's like a kid's room. No way. This place doesn't make sense. No one would live down here. Nicole, Nikki, I think you should get out of there now. <sighs> wait, wait, wait. There's got to be an explanation. Okay, that's it. Uh, now I'm calling the head off some buildings. I'm telling them it's a code red emergency, so I have to... Jesus Christ, Irving. What? This is all Rachel's stuff. Understand? It's her room. A, a, a replica. Uh, you don't know that. Y you can't know what her room looked like. Everything oh, here reminds me of her. Let me look around. I'm sure I'll find an explanation. But my other hand's on the red phone. Keep it there, but don't make the call. I need to figure out what's going on here. Key. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Red we problem. have to call someone. You have to get out of there right now. No, I found a key. It's from my old music box, the one in Leonard's room. I'm having a hard time following. If everything in here is Rachel's, then why is my music box's key here? I don't know and I don't want to know. Tell you what I think? Someone could have been in your room. It doesn't matter. How can you be so calm? If someone was in there, he's not here now. I need to grab the chance to figure out what the hell is going on, or went on, here. Yeah. This place is mental. Uh, yes. I need to do the... Nicole, listen. I already know what you're going to say, but please trust me. Get out of there. Please, you're not helping. There's still a storm. Where am I meant to go? Girl's bedroom. This is 
sick. This is a, a the a, more things get freaky, bizarre, and painful, the more I need to figure out why. Why all of this? We will figure it, it out. It keeps like stopping me from moving quickly. Once you're out of there into a safe hotel room in town, please just listen. A bunch of strange things happened since I got here. Think about it. Phone calls on a deadline. Old lipsticks that don't go bad. Leonard's notes where he says he saw a girl that's supposedly been dead for 10 years, and now this! All good reasons to get out of there. We both agree that saving your skin is yeah. top priority, right? I've looked over every inch of this place, and there's no one. If it's true, you realize what that means. What? What are you trying to tell me? Your father, he spent years in there. In total solitude, with the weight of his family and Rachel on his conscience, he, he was the kind of guy to just let the past slide with a shrug. You know that too. You're joking, right? You think he did this? Think about it. Room could be an act of love, distorted, even morbid, but. In his eyes. How dare you? My, my father might have had a lot of weaknesses, but surely what you're saying, leave out that he cheated on my mom, leave out that he uh, fell in love like with a 16 year old, a older but man. fucking hell, don't you dare even think that. I, he would never have built a fucking underground shrine for a dead person. Really, that's not that crazy. In the end, you didn't spend time with him, but I met him. I'm telling you. No, I don't give a shit about what you have to say. I just want you to know that if you don't want to help discover the truth, don't call me. Now you're just being salty. How dare you? You don't know shit. You don't know fuck. Finally, a bit of peace and quiet. It'll help me clear my head without those incessant phone calls. I'm not a fucking switchboard, for fuck's sake. There's been one phone call. Okay. Chill Let out. Piece things Jesus together. Christ. I just found out there's a room dedicated to Rachel Foster in my father's hotel. Maybe with items from her real room. Holy Jesus, that's freaky. Some people think she didn't commit suicide, and some even think she's still alive. I have to think it through. What concrete clues did I find? First thing, the phone call. They said Rachel isn't dead. Then, the lipstick from 10 years ago turns up still good, and then, my father's various notes where he says he still sees her. If that were true, it might explain the sighting by her friend here in the Timberline. And now I find her retainer box, but no retainer. That room might not be a reconstruction. If Rachel didn't kill herself, Rachel could have lived here. Did but if she's still alive, being in there? why doesn't she tell her parents? Unless they're all in cahoots. No suicide, no timberline money. No, 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 I'm just being paranoid. And then there'd be no reason for her Are to live you? in a fucking underground replica of her room. My key in the middle of Rachel's stuff, is it a message? Where do I fit in? Are you trying to tell me something, Dad? I want to open Mine the music box. box with the hockey player. I don't think I have the guts to hear that tune again. But I must. Yep. Yep. The 27th of December, 1983. The hockey finals at Masula. Us against Cold Springs High. We won by sudden death after a three-hour game, and I got the medal for the most number of face-offs won. According to the papers, 
That was the night Rachel killed herself. Coming home, Mom barely had the time to pull into the garage that I was already racing up to you, waving the medal in your face, Daddy. I was so happy. Adults who call their parents Mommy and Daddy, it's but weird. You had other things on your mind. Right, I'm right. not the only one who think it's weird. And you and Mom started fighting. Well, maybe it's like a rich people thing, like Mommy and Daddy. Louder. But like, it's weird. That long silence when she comes down the stairs with the suitcases and Mrs. Bryce tries to stop her. Mom's car stays here and we leave with my Uncle John's. I never found out what started that fight. Mom never wanted to talk about it. Are you trying to, Daddy? Irving. Right. I'm going to end this one here on day nine with that lovely bombshell. Um, regardless of what happened here, the dad is clearly a creep. Let's let's just agree on that. He was a grown-ass man with a family and a child, and he went after a girl potentially younger than the age of his child. No. And then he built a shrine to her, potentially, unconfirmed, uh, which, rather than being an adult room, was a shrine to a child's bedroom, which, again, leading towards signs of paedophilia here. Um, or, I don't know, maybe the priest was in on it. Who knows? Uh... But we're going to carry this on next time, hopefully with less technical difficulty. So, I hope you have a very lovely day, and most importantly of all, you do you.